for this paleo news here, this will be the last one for the season here because these are done through the Paleo Journal Club at Sam Noel Museum. That's during the semesters. With that being said, we'll do this final one here. And this one is about the de um, debate of the relationship between Torosaurus and Triceratops. There's been some debate among pe um, the scientists and also the, the layperson who have been kind of misinformed about their relationship. And long story short, um, Torosaurus is misnamed. It's, a, you know, there's research showing up that Torosaurus is just an older Triceratops. Now, when the news got out to people, um, you know, about this, they were immediately afraid that this is going to be another Patasaurus argument, where Brontosaurus, everyone loves Brontosaurus, but when it turned to Patasaurus, a lot of fans of dinosaurs were disappointed. Scientists weren't so much, but, um, you know, people were, and afraid this was going to happen. It's like, we're losing Triceratops when no Triceratops was named first, so it takes the proper name, and Taurus, or Taurosaurus is just, you know, no, is no longer a valid name. It's just an older Triceratops for that. So we're going to look at three studies that look into Triceratops, and, you know, a couple of them deal uh, with the relationship with Taurosaurus to begin with. The first one is Taurosaurus Marsh, 1891, and Triceratops Marsh, 1889, is Ceratopsidae Chasmosaurinae Synonym Through Ontogeny by John B. Scanella and the famous John R. Horner. This was published in 2010. And what journal is this? Uh, oh, um, jstore.com. Well, that's the website. You know, let's say abstract. Although they have been considered distinct genera for over a century, ontogenetic analysis reveals that Triceratops and Taurosaurus actually represent growth stages of a single genus. Major changes in cranial morphology, including the opening of parietal fenestra and the elongation of squamosals, occur rapidly, very late in Triceratops ontogeny, and result in the characteristic Taurosaurus morphology. This report um, presents the results. Uh, a 10 year field study of the dinosaurs in Hell Creek Formation, Montana, and is based on a collection of over 50 specimens of Triceratops, including over 30 skulls, which have been amassed in that time, in addition to specimens from numerous other North American museums. This large sample of individuals reveals a full autogenetic um, spectrum of Triceratops. The sentiment of Triceratops and Taurosaurus contributes to the unfolding view of extremely reduced dinosaur diversity just before the end of the Mesozoic era. Now, now what they're talking about is the you know the parietal holes and the squam um you know you look at Taurosaurus it has a very large frill but it's got huge holes in it where Triceratops is a pretty solid frill and they're saying that as Triceratops got older um, bone has been you know removed from the parietal frill and you know to other you know as it gets older as well as other features as well we'll get in details here so. Um, let's see if I can go straight, you know, the, in, of course they do it, you know, with a large number of specimens. Basically this study has shown, you know, through detailed work, through various skull features only, you know, only, that, you know, Taurosaurus is just an older Triceratops. And, um, they go through, you know, um, various facial features, the little bumps on the head. Usually when we see Triceratops depicted with flesh on it, has little spikes in the end of its frill. Those are reduced further on in life. Much more, it's something you see during the young, but it reduces as it gets older. Now, um, read the conclusion here. Recognition of the full scopes of Triceratops autogeny emphasizes the radical degree of craniomorphological transformation uh, that occurs throughout development. Post-orbital horn uh, um, cores reor reorient from being straight to posteriorly directed. Um, to the anterior, interiorly um, directed, correlated with the dorsal ventral flattening of the epiparietals and episquamous muscles throughout ontogeny. The horns, as it gets older, turns in different directions, and the little bumps kind of reduce. All right. Um, the initially unfenestrated parietal squamosals frill thickens throughout the development, with some specimens reaching a thickness um, in excess to six centimeters before rapidly expanding, you know, expanding, thinning, and ultimately adopting the fenestrated conditions found in all our chasmosaurians. Um, we hypothesize that these dramatic changes in cranial ornamentations function in intraspecific communications, signaling relative uh, mat uh, maturity. It is telling that no confirmed juvenile torosaurus skulls have been reported. 
Incorporation of Taurosaurus into the spectrum of Triceratops ontogeny explains why Taurosaurus is only known from a few mature individuals in the Creek Formation, whereas Triceratops is extremely abundant and represents by several growth stages. Immature Taurosauruses actually have been known for over a century but have been called Triceratops. The fact that the majority of Triceratops specimens have been collected since the initial description of the, of the genus are not fully mature or not fully mature suggests that either Triceratops mortality was fairly high before full maturity was reached, or adults did not live in the same er areas as immature animals. Now, um, let's see. Autogenetic analysis of dinosaur morphologies highlight transitional features between sp specimens and suggest that much of the variation previously attributed to a taxonomic differences is actually the product of developmental processes. Studies focused on dinosaur fauna and Hell Creek formations are depleting latest Cretaceous dinosaur diversity through autogenetic synonymies. Um, as, as such, a trend in decreasing dinosaur diversity preceding the end of the Mesozoic era is implied. So yeah, that study right there basically explains how a Taurosaurus is just an older Triceratops in all the in all the ways it tells itself. Now this next one could almost could, could supports the other one, um, but not you know not as direct, but it does kind of support the idea. All right, and again just from same people's word to others, an evolutionary trends in Triceratops from the Hell Creek Formation, Montana by John B. Scanella and John R. Horder, in addition with Denver um, Fowler and Mark B. Goodwin. Let's see. There's this further study shows in this. This is kind of showing the um, relationship of Triceratops um, stra stra stratigraphy um, in their relation and how, um, how should I word this? Um, anagenesis, which is change in species without branching out. The core population has over millions of years, in this case about one to two million years in the study, uh, the overall appearances change without any change in the direct species. Let's see. Um, the placement of over 50 skulls in a well-known horned dinosaur Triceratops within a stratigraphic framework uh, for the Upper Cretaceous Hell Creek Formation of Montana reveals the evolutionary transformation of this genus. Specimens referable to the Two recognizable um, morpho species of Triceratops, um, Triceratops horridus and Triceratops prosus, are stratigraphically separated within the Hell Creek Formation, with the Triceratops prosus um, morphology recovered in the upper third of the formation, and Triceratops horridus found lower in the formation. Hypotheses um, that these morpho species represent sexual or ontogenetic variations within a single species are thus untenable. untenable. Stratigraphic placement of species appear to reveal ancestor-descendant relationships. Transitional morphologies are founded in the middle unit of the formation, and finding that it is consistent with the evolution of Triceratops being characterized by anagenesis, the transformation of the lineage over time. Variations among specimens from the critical stratigraphic zones may indicate a branching event of the Triceratops lineage, purely clad Cladogenetic interpretations of the Hell Creek Formation data set uh, imply greater diversity within the, within the formation. These findings underscore a critical role of stratigraphic data in deciphering evolutionary patterns in dinosauria. Okay, so they took all the, these Triceratops specimens and looking at where they were found in the, morpho in the stratigraphy, they found what they found one, what they call one species of Triceratops in the low, only in the lower formations and another species on the upper formation. So it's the same species. And they're suggesting that it's just the population just changing over time in their overall looks. I guess you can see that way how humans are sort of depicted in um, ancient art, especially when they tried to make it more or less accurate. Um, and compared to us and how we look now, you can see the sort of trend in differences. At least in, in, if you try, if you have enough information in the same amount of time, facial features are overall different. So that's what this one study is. It's just seeing how um, when they do the um, oh um, stratigraphic comparison into the into the cladistic analysis, they show that all of one species are descended, um, all are kind of boxed in with each other. Um, um, one species is boxed into to next to a closer related species, and then to the younger one, you know, in accordance to where they are to the stratigraphy. Very interesting study here. So let's see. Now this next one, um, Taurosaurus is not Triceratops. Ontogeny and Chasmosaurini Triceratopsids 
as a case study in dinosaur taxonomy by Nicholas R. Longrich and Daniel J. Field. Abstract. Um, in horned dinosaurs, taxonomy is complicated by the fact that the cranial ornament, ornament that distinguishes species changes with age. Based on this ob observation, it has been proposed that gen genera, triceratops, and torosaurs are in fact synonymous with, it, with species specimens identified as torosaurus representing the adult form of triceratops. The hypothesis of the synonym makes three testable predictions. One, the species in question should have similar geographic and stratigraphic distributions. Two, specimens assigned to torosaurus should be more mature than those assigned to triceratops. And three, intermediates should exist um, uh, that combine features of triceratops and torosaurus. The first condition you know, appears to be met, but it remains unclear whether the other predictions are born out of the fo fossil findings. This is a paper trying to rebut Horner's um, et al. Um, group about the relationship between Torosaurus and Triceratops. So they go around, they, um, they explain their deal, they make their own um, morphological trees, and and there comes a problem. This was brought up in the Paleo Journal Club. Long story short, they are cherry picking when they did their cladistic oh, when they did their cladistic trees. They seem first of all there is a low number of torosauruses. You gotta keep this in mind within both studies. Torosaurus is not found as much as Triceratops, and what is found is only mature species. They there was a question about um, if I recall from the meeting, there was a question about a couple of the torosaurus they mentioned in this paper having a skull in a certain condition of attack or something like that. They didn't see, they seem to be relying on the research and not looking, go to the museums, look into skulls themselves to see if they confirm the condition of the skulls, um, whether it's um, um, caused by illness or caused, or it's just natural. They talk about the um, couple of torosaurus skulls with the, um, the holes are not perfectly symmetrical. They seem to be reduced over time mosaically, one more than the other until the story evens out. And they also, the two of the graduate students looked at the, um, when they looked at their um, cladistics, they have, um, when you make a cladistic trees, you do you run through um, um, a series of traits and you run it through a software program like Palp or others. And the more traits you had, the more possible number of trees you create. You're trying to look for the most simplistic tree. And the number of trees they've got was, um, let's see, the initial run resulted in 250,000 trees. Um, and that comes to your first clue that this is not going to work too well. Um, that many trees in, you know, a possibility, the lower one you want, you know, the lower number the better. Not to mention, according to the graduate students who looked in the post data after this, so some of these papers have data you can look up through their website so you could, um, without being in a paper itself, you just go to the website, pick up the information, and then apply it to your, your, so if you want to test it for yourself, like run it through your own program, you can. They seem to have cherry-picked the traits for Taurosaurus out of the study, that when the graduate students put those traits back in, it showed results similar to what Horner et al. was going for. So, I think they're just trying to split the two species and not doing a very good job. You know, when we brought this up at a meeting there, this was not, um, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't work well. Now, granted, countering such arguments like Taurosaurus and Triceratops are fine. You, if you feel like you have something to go with, fine, test it, but do it right. You, let's see, try to articulate this.